hello. We are just gonna pretend that I recorded this back when I started and not when I'm recording the outro, <laughs> but I decided to do this reading challenge because I have not been making time for my hobbies like I normally do, and I really wanted to push myself to read more. It's been taking me like weeks to read one book and that is just not okay with me. I took a bit of a different approach and we are going to set some ground rules instead of the strict reading time equals screen time plot. <laughs> I work a nine to five job and I just don't think that I have four extra hours in my day to solely read. Rule number one, I must read during all of my lunch breaks at work. I cannot use any scrolling apps like YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, all of that fun stuff. I can watch YouTube while I'm getting ready in the morning. So the big distinction is like looking at shorts on YouTube versus watching one specific video at a dedicated time in the day that I've allowed. I must listen to audiobooks while I'm driving and I can watch TV while I'm eating dinner. I'll review all of my stats at the end of the video, but I came up with some pretty interesting results that I'm kind of surprised with. On to day one. And the book that I'm going to be reading for most of this week or until I finish it is The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi. I have the audiobook from the library, so I'm hoping to get through a lot of this while I'm out running errands today. My main thought on the book so far is that it's very good as an audiobook. I had heard some mixed reviews about the writing style because there's these weird like asides that the narrator does where she kind of like breaks the fourth wall. I wasn't sure how that was gonna be, but I feel like it works perfectly for an audiobook. I can kind of see how it would be annoying to read because it's a little bit different. Like you're just reading ink on paper. It's not like someone can do different voices to show like I'm talking to you and telling you the story versus like someone's interrupted me and now I'm giving an aside to them. That's kind of how it feels in the audiobook. So I really like that. I think that works very well. I'm excited to sit down on my couch with the book and the audiobook and just listen to it be read to me. That's my favorite thing ever. I need to turn the AC on in here. is What Lies in the Woods. I thought about picking this up when it was a pick a couple months ago. I really love Kate Alice Marshall. She wrote one of my favorite books that got me back into reading, which is Rules for Vanishing. I'm excited about this one. I don't really have anything else to say. And then this one I have been wanting to read since it came out. I love Riley Sager. I kind of hate how much I love Riley Sager, but his books are so fun. And honestly, I might pick this one up next after I finish Amina. So, we'll see. So I just read a little bit more. I'm about 10% through the audiobook right now between running errands, getting home, reading a little bit. And I love it. I love a day off. Happy Wednesday. I did cheat just a little bit. I watched some YouTube while I painted my nails, or I guess I listened to YouTube while I painted my nails. But the plan now is to put the audiobook on while I fold my laundry, and then I also need to water my plants. Most of the rest of the day is just reading and putting on some YouTube maybe while I eat dinner. I don't know, but I'm just trying to make the most of my last day off before I go back to work tomorrow. One last thing before I start reading again and getting back into my chores and whatnot, I think another thing that I'm gonna hold myself to this week is less about screen time and more just, eh, it's kind of about screen time for me, but I'm gonna try to limit my online shopping. I don't really wanna buy anything online. I want to stop using that as a way to scroll on my phone too. I just caught myself doing it while I was watching some YouTube videos and finishing my nails, but someone will mention something and then I'll look it up and then I'll just scroll on the website. And I don't like that. I don't like that I do that. I don't like that that causes me to spend money that I wouldn't have spent otherwise. Um, I feel like I've let myself become too impressionable from Instagram ads and people just talking about products and YouTube videos and stuff like that. So I think for me, part of this week is less about actual screen time and more about the parts of being on my phone all the time and consuming a lot of media that I don't really like so much. So adding that to the list. At this point, I'm 135 pages in. I'm really liking it. It's really kicking off. And I think we got our first kind of like plot twist 
moment um, and I'm really excited. I'm having a lot of fun reading it. The audiobook narrators are great. There's two different narrators. So there's a narrator for the main chapters, which is from Amina's perspective. And then there are these like little, I don't know, like extra stories almost. And in these, it's a male narrator. So it's really easy when I'm doing something else, like when I was running errands or when I was cooking, it was really easy to tell like which part of the book I was in just because the narrator changes. And they both do a great job. I really like them. The other thing about this book that I'm really liking is it's reminding me of two books that I loved. One of them I read a couple years ago and the other one I read, I don't know if it was last summer or last winter, but I read it last year sometime. And that's The Stardust Thief. That is the big one that this is reminding me of. And then also To Kill a Kingdom. So that one for the like pirate stuff. And then The Stardust Thief for the like Arabic influence adventure story. So I really love both of those. It's also kind of giving me a little bit of Legends and Lattes, not in the sense that it's like cozy in that way, but I think because it just has like a strong female main character. So it is a little bit after 10 and I'm halfway through the book. I'm really happy this has been my best reading day in quite a while. So I'm excited to see how the rest of the week goes. I'm expecting that probably not tomorrow, but maybe the next day I'll finish Amina and then I can pick something else to read. But it's really exciting to see so much progress in one day and just to spend my time a little bit more thoughtfully and not scroll on my phone quite as much. Successful day one. The book just got crazy. <laughs> I'm on page like 285 and I just wanna keep reading, but it's eight, so now I have to start working. Maybe I can like, sneak in a 15 minute break and read a little bit more for lunch. I'm really liking the book. It's getting so good and all I wanna do is read at this point. I've been working for about two hours now. I think I am going to take a break in a little bit. I stopped in the middle of the chapter last night, so still all I can think about is getting back to my book. The big challenge is really not just picking up my phone when I have any small amount of downtime. It turns into like my entire break time is just scrolling on my phone. It'll be interesting to see what I find by the end of the week as a good way to like replace that break with something else. So stay tuned. Quick update. So it is my lunch break now. I did put on a YouTube video while I was making my salad, but to balance it out instead of watching something while I eat, I'm gonna listen to the audiobook while I eat. I haven't been on my phone very much. Oh, another thing that I thought of, because I don't have Love Island to watch during dinner, I think I'm gonna start watching Heartstopper during dinner because those episodes are pretty short. I'm not gonna waste a ton of time on TV or YouTube or whatever. Then I won't get sucked in to everything else. I just finished work and the last thing I wanna do right now is read. I really just wanna sit on my couch and scroll my phone, but I also know that if I do that, I'm gonna be doing that for like an hour. I'm just like, tired and I don't feel like reading. I'm gonna have to force myself just a little bit. <laughs> I just finished watching the first episode of Heartstopper and I teared up like three different times. It just really gets me when they do the little doodles that spark out of them holding hands and stuff and I don't know, it makes me so happy. Charlie is so cute with Nick coming out. They handles it so amazingly. It's adorable, absolutely love that. The neon sign in Charlie's room that says music that you see at the end of the first episode when he's sitting in bed, where are the cords for that? Where are the cables? Did they make this neon sign out of glow sticks? Because I do not see a single cable. I think they got rid of them in post. Like they're just gone. They've been removed from the shot. Imogen is so cute. She's such a good character. She's so sweet. The way that she reacts to Nick coming out is adorable. Oh yeah, Ellen Tao, duh. They're cute and Tao will figure it out. But first episode, incredible. I'm so excited for the Paris trip. Yes. Oh, and a quick reading update. So I am going to read a little bit more. I do have to go work out soon. So 
gonna read until I have to leave and go do that. And then I'll come back and I'm just reading for the rest of the night. I think I might finish this book. If I don't finish it tonight, I'll probably finish it like first thing tomorrow morning because I have less than 100 pages left at this point. And that's crazy to me because it's a 470 page book, but I'm just flying through it. Big news. <laughs> I feel like me without my glasses is like a jump scare or something. But anyway, first thing, I got this cute little jacket at the studio because they were having a sale. And I just, I'm trying to show you how the jacket looks. And me and two other girls actually bought the last three that they had. So super happy about that. I went to Publix and treated myself to some cookies because I feel like I have figured out how to beat the scrolling, which is just, go on an app that does one little thing and then be done with it, like Duolingo or doing a mini crossword or something like that. And lastly, I know what my next book is going to be. The audiobook for A Day of Fallen Night came in and I have the physical copy on my shelf and it's huge and it's been taunting me. And the way that I read The Priory of the Orange Tree was with the audiobook while I was reading it. And that's when I really learned that I like doing that with fantasies. I'm so glad that after I finish Amina in basically two days, two and a half days. I don't think I'll finish it tonight. I think I'll probably finish it tomorrow morning, but still like that's amazing for me recently. It's been taking me like at least two weeks to finish one single book for the last like three months. I'm so happy. Happy day two. Good morning, day three. Big update, I woke up extra early this morning, not on purpose, it just happened that way. And that did mean I spent some extra time on my phone, but it also means that I did have time to finish Amina. So that is a big win. I really, really liked this book. I do have to go to work today, but I am going to bring A Day of Fallen Night with me. I'm not sure that I'll start reading it during my lunch break just because it's such a big book. I feel like it's gonna be so slow to start. I don't know that it's gonna be worth it really to start reading it during such a short break in my day. So I may wait until I finish work later this evening to pick that one up, but I don't have any big plans tonight. So really I'm just gonna be reading for the rest of the day. work a while ago and I have not read, I was gonna say I haven't read anything today. I have not started the new book. I am scared. It's really big. This is a, this is a chunky book. This book is huge. This is my head and this is the book. This book is big. We're matching, so that's a good sign. We're gonna be friends eventually. I don't wanna start this book. I wanna start this book, but I finished work and got home and I called my friend and then I called my partner and then I put on some YouTube and then I was like, oh, well, I'm eating dinner so I can still watch stuff. And um, now I'm done with all that. So I think it's time to start the book. I'm gonna start the book. I'll start it right now. I'll start it while I'm standing here. Oh, there's a character glossary too, I think. Yep, yep, okay. So there's, okay. Uh, what am I doing? What have I gotten myself? Okay, 13 pages of people and then we have acknowledgements, which is a nice two pages, less than two pages. 13 pages of characters and two pages of people to acknowledge in real life. I'm talking about this like I hate this book. I'm really excited. <laughs> I really liked the first one. I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read now. I'm gonna read for real. We're reading. Quick update, I read 30 pages. I made some dinner and then watched Heartstopper. So lots of progress has been made. <laughs> My thoughts on episode two, the music neon sign, no chord. I still don't know how they do it. Ellen Tao, great. They're both figuring it out. They're getting their heads out of their asses. Incredible. Um, okay, Nick's brother looks like Jason from Hannah Montana. And I will stand by that. He is like the TV show older brother who 
was supposed to be like a couple years older than the main character, but he's actually like in his late thirties. Like Jason from Hannah Montana. And that's all I have to say. I literally just stopped the audiobook in the middle of a sentence because I knew that this was going to be gay and I am so happy and I'm so invested. I'm on page 48 and I'm in it now. It's gay. That's all I needed. I'm hooked. It's day four. I'm about 15% into a day of fall and night and I feel like it looks like I haven't read anything, but that's okay. I finally found a comfortable seating position to read this book in because holding it up is just not an option. Like this book is so heavy, especially to try to hold it with one hand even. It's not sustainable. Yesterday was probably my worst day for being on my phone. And I do feel like I'm doing better. I'm being more intentional about not scrolling on things, but I did watch a lot of YouTube yesterday between my TV and my phone. So I think it'll be really interesting to look back at the end of the week and see which apps on which days I spent the most time on. I'm very curious to see what the YouTube watch time is like because it's not even gonna capture everything because I've been watching it on my TV too. And I did quite a bit of that yesterday. I just, I was tired after two whole work days of my two day work week. I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but something about learning new characters in a fantasy story is a lot. And like this might as well be three books, so or at least two books for fantasies. Um, so it's just quite a lot of information to digest. And I think the last time I read a book this big was probably Priory of the Orange Tree, or maybe, I can't remember how many pages it was, but I think it was 700 or 800 pages, um, Stephen King's Fairy Tale. That was the last like big, big book I read. It's just a wee bit intimidating versus the usual like 300 page contemporary fiction. I think I'm gonna make some breakfast. I have a class to go to with my friend, I'm going to a beginner class with her, and then I'm gonna to go to my usual class right after. I am thinking about going to see Barbie again. That's why I'm wearing pink. I've never seen a movie by myself, and that's something I've really wanted to do. I have friends who would probably go see Barbie again, but I don't feel like coordinating with anyone. I feel like just doing my own thing today. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna to try to squeeze in a few pages before class while I drink my smoothie or something like that and then I will check in with you later once I've had a chance to read a bit more. Good day so far, have not done much reading other than what I read in the morning, but it's just me and this book and probably some dinner at some point. Maybe one more episode of Heartstopper, but that's it. I haven't even finished episode three of Heartstopper, but I'm pretty sure they're VFXing all of these neon signs in because none of them have cords. Like they're at the movies for the date and there's no cords on any of the neon signs. Not a single cord in what's supposedly like a, a normal public movie theater. I think they're VFXing in all the neon signs, absolutely. You can't convince me otherwise, that's my theory. I think this is gonna be my last little update for the night. I did finish book one or part one or however it's broken up in this book. I think there's probably like five of them or something, but I finished the first part and I am probably gonna read a little bit more before I go to bed. I want to at least try to read 100 pages of this a day so that that wouldn't even put me finishing it before this video is over, but It'd get pretty close. I'd like to finish this before the video's over, but we shall see. I went to my little brunch spot. I had the perfect seat. They just renovated their patio, so I've been dying to check out that little area that's perfect for going there by yourself. And I also got a lot of reading done. I'm heavily invested in all of the stories now, even the male perspective that I didn't care about before. Great morning, great start to the day, happy Sunday. I'm excited to go get my groceries. I don't have that many things to get, so should be home and reading again pretty soon.
had the loveliest little morning. So now I can just chill and wait for my laundry and my dishes and kind of get everything squared away before I have to go back to work tomorrow. I am going to start reading again. I think I mentioned this when I was in the car, but I got to part three. So that's really exciting. We're making significant progress at this point. Like I've read a good chunk of this book. I don't think it was too slow to start considering how big the book is and that now around like 300 pages we've really gotten into the main storyline that unites everyone. It probably took like 150 pages to get into each character's personal conflict or whatever their like personal drama that they had that we we're interested in but it took about 250-300 pages to get into the big plot that's kind of gonna pull all of them together I'm assuming at some point so I think for an 800 something page book that makes total sense and now that we're like 300 pages in especially because I have the audiobook with the narrators it's very clear to me you know which character we're on I'm not really getting them confused I have a pretty good grasp of what's happening with each of them and I'm not too overwhelmed which I think is why I was putting off this book for a little bit when it came time to start it because I was just nervous that I don't know. I wasn't going to know what was going on. I was just going to be confused the whole time. I think I'm going to read a little bit more. I do kind of want to watch a movie at some point today. I was thinking about rewatching. Um, oh my God, what's it called? Now I'm blanking now that I'm trying to say it out loud. Last Night in Soho. I think I'm going to watch Last Night in Soho. I'm watching episode four of Heartstopper right now, and my thoughts so far are that Imogen's little purple beret is adorable. Tao's whole outfit is incredible. Isaac's storyline, so cute. And what was my last thing? Oh, I wanna go back to Europe. This whole thing is just making me wanna go back to Europe. I went to Norway earlier this year. I love the Paris trip episode. It's like one of those almost comfort movies in a way. I wish that the Paris trip were like, a movie, Lizzie McGuire movie style, but make it Heartstopper, which would be kind of amazing because they both do the same thing with their little animations. And I obviously love that kind of stuff. I think after this, I'm just gonna go back to reading. Last update of the day, I'm about to get ready for bed and then just read until I fall asleep, but I'm on page 473 and that's where I needed to read to today to keep on track with my 186 pages a day to finish this book by the end of the week and I think I'm gonna try to read as, literally as much as I can before I fall asleep. Okay happy Monday, happy day six. I am about to go to work. I'm gonna read during my lunch break and then I'll check in with you when I get home probably. I just got home from work and I was watching a YouTube short, which I shouldn't be doing anyway because I'm trying not to be on scrolling apps, but I got sucked in. I didn't even get sucked in. It was the first one I watched and I just spoiled part of season two of Heartstopper for myself. I'm so upset, especially because I don't remember this happening in the graphic novel. This was not what I wanted to come home to. <laughs> I'm so sad. I did read during my lunch break though. <laughs> I'm so tired. I haven't read very much today. I read during lunch and I was like, this is great. Let's keep the momentum going. I read a little bit while I was making dinner and then I realized that I was going to be probably running late to class with making dinner. I was cutting it very close and then I got nervous and I had to stop reading and then I had to make my food too fast and then it was still ready, like just in time for me to go. So I didn't get to eat before. And then I ended up talking to people for like an hour after class. And then I just talked to my partner on the phone for like an hour. So now it's almost 10 o'clock and I got off the phone with him because my Duolingo owl was crying at me and it made me sad. So <laughs> I think I'm just gonna get in bed and read like I did last night until I fall asleep. 
ideally I should read another 100 pages today, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. Um, also, I looked at my schedule tomorrow and it's not looking good, friends. <laughs> My work schedule is so busy tomorrow. I don't even have a full hour for lunch. I only have 30 minutes. Ugh, my whole evening today got so thrown off and I don't know how. I got home from work and I was like, this is so promising. And now I'm here and I haven't done anything I thought I would do tonight. Super quick update. I am working from home today. I have about 30 minutes to read before I start working. And I have a lot more pages to read. I think I have like, over 200 pages to read. Yeah, I have like 240 pages to read until I'm finished with the book. I've made very good progress in the last few days, but we still have quite a ways to go. Okay, you know what? This could work. This could work. I just need to do nothing else except read in my free time. So I'm gonna go read before I start working and then I will update you later. We're glad we found more time in our day. I only read like 20 pages this morning, so we're gonna see how much I can read in an hour, probably like 50 pages, but it's not nothing. I'm not finishing this book today. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to finish this. Like it's a challenge, like I need to finish this book in this video. I mean, I will, like it'll be done before I give my final thoughts and everything, but I'm treating this like the challenge is finishing the book and the challenge is really just limiting my screen time. So I don't know what I'm doing. update. I am age page 738 and now I'm going to go to class. I have a little over 100 pages left so I'm feeling kind of hopeful that I can finish it tonight but also that's not the point of this challenge so we need to stop that. I just got back from class and my hair looks crazy so I'm going to go take a shower <laughs> and then I'm going to read until I fall asleep because it's already like almost 10 o'clock and yeah, I think the next time you hear from me will be my reflections on how the week went and then you'll find out if I finished this book today or not or if I finished it on Wednesday or the day that I record the clip or whatever. You're gonna find out what happened with the saga of trying to read this book quickly even though that was so not the point of this. <laughs> Findings coming soon. I have a collection of findings and I'm kind of shocked by the whole thing. Well, mostly shocked. <laughs> I'm going to break down each app and then we're gonna go into my overall screen time and what that looked like. This was a massive success. I didn't check Pinterest at all on my phone throughout this whole challenge. A lot of times I just catch myself scrolling on Pinterest and like doing random stuff or like looking at things that I didn't really care about or it makes me wanna buy something that I didn't really care about. So the fact that I was able to pretty easily just eliminate it from my daily use is great. And I might just delete the Pinterest app on my phone or keep it removed from my home screen or something so that I can look it up if I wanna pull up something specific. But other than that, I don't really feel like I need Pinterest on my phone anymore. Okay, mixed results here, but overall I was on Instagram less per day than normal, but not that much less, like a few minutes. That really tells me that most of my time that I think is being wasted on Instagram probably isn't. In a way, I'm kind of proud of myself, not during the challenge, but just in general, that the past year, I think I've really minimized my Instagram consumption. Okay, this is where I'm kind of surprised and kind of not surprised because I know I said several times in the video, like, I spent a lot of time watching YouTube, I just watched a bunch of YouTube videos and didn't read, like, I mentioned that several times, but I think in my head I was watching more of it on the TV than I thought I did because I know if I factored that in, the screen time would have been like crazy. <laughs> But I have no way of tracking the screen time on the TV, at least as far as I know. I know I spent a lot of time watching YouTube on my TV, but the fact that I spent that much time watching YouTube on my phone too is not what I wanted. The other thing I noticed is that I really need time after I finish working from home to like do nothing. And my go-to is YouTube. And it's not just YouTube on the TV because I kind of play that as background noise, almost like a podcast throughout the day when I work from home. But I need to like sit on the couch and just like do something 
but I think the way I'm doing it right now is not the way that I want to do it going forward. So I could see this being like a time for me to be on specific apps. Like maybe that's when I do my Duolingo every day, or maybe that's when I do the crossword. I'm at a point where I just have so many things that I'm interested in and so many things that I enjoy doing that it really bothers me when I find myself spending time on something that I didn't plan to spend that much time on. And YouTube definitely falls into that category for me right now. Before we go over the total screen time, I also took a look at what apps I used most each day. So Pinterest and YouTube go up during the weekends, and then Instagram for the most part is what I use during the week. I thought it was kind of funny that on my vacation day, Libby was my top app. <laughs> I think that just goes to show how much I was pausing and unpausing the book that I was listening to on that last vacation day when I was running errands. I really think that's all it was. <laughs> More screen time on Libby than I did on any other app that day. Hilarious. And without further ado, my total screen time. This really showed me that what I spend time on and the reason why I'm not reading is not really my phone. Like you can see here, there's a little bit of a difference. There's some decrease in the screen time that I have day to day and my overall screen time for the week, but it is not that much. <laughs> so what I was doing in this past week was not taking my screen time away and fitting more reading time in because of that. I actually just found more pockets of time in my day where I was doing other things and I used that time to read. Like this week in particular, especially over the weekend, my partner was sick and so I didn't go to his house and that gave me a ton more time to read. Usually I would only read like in the mornings if we we're spending the weekend together before he wakes up. But because I wasn't over there and I was able to just do my thing and set my own schedule all weekend, I read way more this weekend. I also read more throughout the week because I wasn't spending as much time with friends in the evenings. And I know I mentioned a couple of times, like my evening went off the rails or whatever, cause I was talking to people, like that was pretty minimal. <laughs> I feel like what I really took away from this is that one, I should probably redo this video at some point <laughs> and actually do the challenge because I think it would be interesting to redo this now, knowing what my problem apps are and saying like, okay, no YouTube at all. Like I'm not allowed to watch YouTube for the whole week. It also showed me that all I had to do to get back into reading was read more. <laughs> I really didn't have to do anything that crazy. And I think the only reason I was beating myself up so much in this video is because I knew I said I wasn't supposed to be on screens as much, but I also knew that wasn't gonna be realistic for me. So anytime that I would do that, and I was on screens pretty much as often as I normally am, it didn't deter me from reading a ton. I don't know, I think this is a success. I learned a valuable lesson that really, you just gotta pick up your book. <laughs> I did finish a day of Fallen Night. It was really good, I really liked it. I liked Priory just a little bit more, but other than that, I thought it was fantastic. My final thoughts on the results, I definitely broke my own rules quite a bit, and I think that's why we didn't see a crazy difference in screen time. Thank you for coming on this journey with me, and I will see you soon.